Catherine Gibson, the author of Ted Harris and Painting yes. Paradise. Yes. Good morning, Catherine. Hello. How are you? I'm just great, thanks, Good. Tanya. So tell us, you wrote this, so this fabulous book called Ted Harris and Painting Paradise. What inspired you to write the book? I guess, I guess initially I was asked by Mr. Harrison to write the book, which of course was a, a big surprise and a, and a great thrill. And then it, uh, it, um, it occurred to me that I was into a real adventure, and indeed I was. And the inspiration really happened as I began to know Mr. Harrison and also to spend time um, in his personal home with his, with his paintings. Um, looking at his materials, um, he gave me unrestricted access to his personal uh, files and papers. So, actually, as I became more familiar with him, um, the inspiration to write his his book grew and grew and grew until actually it was just like Christmas morning every day. I was working on it. No. Christmas morning every day. So how long did it take you to write this book? Well, we met in the fall of 2009, and, or 2005, excuse me, and it went to press in uh, 2008. So it was about, you know, it was several years that actually it took from the initial meeting and the interviewing until um, it, went, it went off to become the book. And I understand that this is the first biography uh, done on yes. Mr. Harrison. Now, there must have been some research involved, and yeah. there must have been some challenges involved with finding some information. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, process? there's, there's, uh, yeah, that's right, Tanya. There's not a lot of, uh, of really what we would call um, definitive work written about Mr. Harrison. This is the first biography of, of him, and there's no other books that exist. So I was I having to deal with follow. interviews, uh, yeah. well, this uh, uh, newspapers, yeah. and Make some sure magazines. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, really uh, on my own in terms of, of the research. So it's what I call primary research, and I was I was pretty much um, there trying to to sniff and snort and find what I could. Um, but you know, when you talk to enough people and you dig around enough, you can find what you need. Yeah. And of course, I I had all. The, you know, Mr. Harrison's papers that he uh, he kept everything. He and his wife kept everything. So, at the end of the day, I actually had more material than I could I could actually use in the book. Oh. So there could be even a second. Oh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so with all the research that you've done, I understood that you also traveled to the Yukon yeah. and traveled to uh, England, mm -hmm. to his hometown. So you must have had um, quite the resource and quite a lot of stories. Um, from other people. Um, what are some of the more interesting stories you've heard from your book tour and from your travels? Certainly getting to uh, be in the landscapes that inspired Ted uh, really helped me to put the book together. But because Ted is about people, I mean, when people look at his art, they it's about people. It's about people in their environment and how they relate. And I really did learn that Ted is about people. and. Wherever I went, I would have I would have people coming up to me and sharing their stories, and I, I had all kinds of interesting stories. I remember I was sitting um, on a bench outside of a, a lodge in north of Whitehorse, and it was one of those days where there was nobody going by, and, and I was sitting there, and a fellow came up and sat beside me, a young First Nations uh, gentleman, and said how he had been a, a student of Ted Harrison's, and we got to talking, and he said, you know, I never really did much with art, but but Ted, Ted was great. I mean, Mr. Harrison was great. He let us do what we wanted. But he taught me that I had to make sure that whatever I did in life was true to my to my heart. And and he said, uh, you know, t he was very serious about wanting us to always uh, follow our own path. And he made that very clear. And there were stories of 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 Ted how uh, he would uh, you know help younger students. How how he would. He would champion students who maybe weren't getting um, the kind of attention that they might need in life. Um, a very kind and gentle man. With Mr. With with the book, um, it's about Mr. Harrison and his life. Um, what were some of the uh, more poignant moments in his life? What made him? How did his artwork evolve? It it actually. Um, it actually came about um, in the Yukon. Ted Harrison had um, been a classically trained artist in England and was painting for 20 years before he came to Canada. Um, he, he was out one day when he was first in the Yukon. It was a fall autumn afternoon trying to paint the landscape, which at that time of the year in the Yukon is just ablaze with colors. And, um, 
it's, it's a riot of, of, of flaming colors. It's really beyond description to explain how beautiful it is at that time of year. He was trying to capture this in oil, and he became so frustrated, he just, he just said that he couldn't paint this way, that he was going to throw out everything he had learned, um, and that he was going to start again, and he was going to build up his style. And that's when he actually stopped painting outside and went in and painted in the home, in the kitchen actually. And he began to create a style that we know today as Harrison. But that built up over a few years. Now, with, it must have been very fascinating reading and learning, uh, researching, I should say, and learning about Mr. Harrison and traveling about. So what are some of the best uh, things about being an author? Well, there's, there's, you know, the life of the author, there's, it's almost uh, sort of a Jekyll and Hyde situation. You spend a lot of time by yourself, um, months by yourself, just working away. And so you have to be the type of person that um, has a very rich interior life. <laughs> you have to be happy to just be with whatever it is that you're working on. And, and certainly, any time, um, or usually, you know, when an author chooses a book, it's sort of like choosing a mate. Uh, you know, a partner, because you're married to this thing for, for life, really. Um, so there, there's that sort of uh, wonderful opportunity to, to get into your interior life and, and enjoy the research and, and to play with words. Um, and then the other aspect of it is uh, when a book comes out, there's often um, the public side of it, and, and that's quite different. Um, and that's where you're out um, meeting people. And I've had the good fortune to travel across the country and and into the United States with the books that I've written, and this book in particular. It takes you to, to the large cities, the small places. Um, you get a, a sense, particularly with the Harrison book, a sense of Canada and Canadians, because we did go from very large places to very small places, um, just talking to people. And wherever I went, I was always amazed at just how much Ted Harrison's work is admired and how much the man himself is loved. And I understand that from the book tour across mm -hmm. Canada, that you have, you and Mr. Harrison have met some very influential people and some very interesting people. We have, <laughs> we have. Um, I I must say that uh, you know whatever our station in life, people are people, and that certainly was was clear to me in in this particular trip because we did meet. Um, uh, actually, we had tea at, at 24 Sussex House with Mrs. Harp, with the Prime Minister's wife. And she was just as down to earth and as approachable as uh, the people that we met in the back country of the wilderness in the Yukon. Um, we had a lovely afternoon with Miss Singer and Murray, who's a great friend and fan of Ted Harrison's work and a collector of his work. And again, you know, she was just as approachable and as charming as um, the people that we met in Edmonton. And I, I think um, one of the joys of the work I do is, is meeting people uh, from different stations in life and uh, different, different venues and different places and finding that there's a common ground uh, with all of us in sort of our hum humanity. And that's the secret of Ted's work because his, his work does um, appeal to the intellectual. It also appeals to the person who just enjoys great color and great composition. And um, it's not pretentious. And, and I really have to say that in this particular tour, um, because Mr. Harrison is such an unpretentious person, um, maybe that's what attracted this wonderful um, and varied and colorful trip. But uh, it was certainly characterized by meeting warm and, and wonderful Canadians across the country.